Hey, in this video I would like to talk about vehicle dynamics, specifically about aerodynamic drag. How it affects the vehicle, how it affects top speed and what are the consequences and the benefits of having a lower aerodynamic drag coefficient. Stay tuned to find out. Okay, so first I would like to tell you what are the drag coefficients for a few simple shapes. Uh, for a hemisphere, the drag coefficient is around 0.42. Uh, for triangle or for uh, sharp objects, the aerodynamic drag coefficient is around 0.50. Also, a really interesting factor when designing a car stands in cooling. How much air does the car really need? In sports cars, uh, such as the Lamborghini Huracan for example, uh, the car needs air to cool down the brakes and the car needs a ton of air to suck in to cool down the engine. If the car doesn't need too much air, we can have closed vents in the front of the car like the Tesla Model 3 which has uh, the lowest drag coefficient in a production car 0.21 and I have made a short list over here with a few cars mainly from BMW just to compare the aerodynamic drag coefficients uh, and I started with the BMW 3 Series E90 which has a 0.27 2.30 drag coefficient if the car comes with the efficient dynamics package which was optional uh, for this car it could drop up to 0.25 which sounds small but from uh, 0.25 to 0.27 it's 8-9% to 9 difference, which could help you gain a better fuel consumption and a better top speed. Uh, in BMW F30 3 Series from 2012, the standard drag coefficient is around 0.30 and it could be lowered down to 0.24 if the car is purchased with the optional efficient dynamics package. Also, uh, in the 5 Series we have a 0.28 and just as a small comparison, the Toyota Prius has a 0.24 drag coefficient which compared to the Lamborghini Huracan which has a 0.34 it makes the car much more aerodynamic and fuel efficient. Now I would like to make a small case study in which I have uh, make, made a few calculations which involves my own car, my Audi A3 8P from 2004 I have made two different calculations at 72 km per hour or 45 miles per hour or 20 meters per second. I am using metric units to compute the uh, necessary power to overcome the aerodynamic drag forces and I have came up to the conclusion that to go at 72 km per hour my car has a frontal area of 2.17 square meters the density of the air is 1.225 kg per metric cube and my aerodynamic drag for my car is 0.33 so to drive my Audi at 72 km per hour or 45 miles per hour I need exactly 3.5 kilowatts or 4.76 horsepower now don't think that if you double the speed from 72 km per hour to 144, you will need just the double amount of power to overcome the aerodynamic drag forces. The, for, the power required to overcome those forces exponentially increase. So at 144 km per hour or 90 miles per hour, we need exactly 28 kilowatts or 38.08 horsepower. If you divide 38.08 to 4.76 horsepower, it's exactly 8 times more. So 2 times the speed, 8 times more power required. That's why the Bugatti Chiron can go just up to around 430 km per hour and has 1500 horsepower. It's because it has a low aerodynamic drag because it needs to suck in air to cool down and it needs to overcome these forces which are insane at that speed. And now if we compare the differences between 0.24 and 0.34 
or simply comparing the Toyota Prius with the Huracan just in terms of aerodynamics uh, it's exactly 30% difference between them and it could be critical at high speeds the advantage of having a lower aerodynamic drag coefficient is that you can accelerate faster at higher speeds if you have uh, 140 km per hour and you have two cars with the same power outputs and these drag coefficients the one with a lower drag coefficient can accelerate faster and you can reach a higher top speed also running at the same speed let's say 144 km per hour uh, and we have two uh, different cars having the same power outputs the same engines the same transmissions uh, this car will, will have will require 30% less power to overcome that uh, those drag forces at that speed so fuel efficiency will be much better not with 30% but it will be much better so the moral of this video the moral of this uh, aerodynamic drag coefficient when you purchase a car also be aware of the drag coefficient pay attention uh, when you purchase a car ask the dealer what drag coefficient that this car has. If you purchase a car like mine, a hatchback, it has an awful drag coefficient, 0.33. Kind of sucks in my opinion if you buy a brand new car in 2017, 2018. Uh, if you purchase a brand new car in 2018, 2017, make sure that you have a drag coefficient of at least uh, 0.28. And that's because fuel efficiency matters and even if you don't care too much about fuel efficiency, if you have a powerful car, 200, 300 horsepower, you could make the car a little bit faster. So this is what you need to know about the aerodynamic drag coefficient. If you have any questions regarding this subject, leave them down below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already for more car videos, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.